Actually, I thought all this material will be complete in one module, but uh, as usual, I uh, uh, my estimate was not right. So we'll just start from here. It's okay. So see, uh, we are talking about helium atom wave function, many electron atom wave function, and we have learned this elegant way of writing the wave function in the form of a Slater determinant. Let's have a look at the Slater determinant. Look at the first row what is the constant and what is varying? Electron number is constant is not it? Psi 1 s 1 alpha 1 psi 1 s 1 beta 1. What has remained same is the electron number and what has changed? Even psi 1 s is same, what has changed is from alpha we have gone to beta. So, if you look at the whole thing, what has really changed is your spin orbital. Similarly, in the second row, go from first column to the second one, electron number remains 2, but from psi s1, sorry psi s2 alpha 2, psi 1 s2 alpha 2, we go to psi 1 s2 beta 2. Okay. So, uh, on going from left to right in state determinant, the spin orbital changes and the electron label remains the same. And upon going from top to bottom, then what happens? Psi s, let us look at the first column now, psi 1 s 1 alpha 1, psi 1 s 2 alpha 2. So, psi 1 s alpha that is your uh, spin orbital that has remained same when you went from top to bottom. What has changed is the electron level has changed from 1 to 2 and same here. So, uh, for the record let me write that in many textbooks theta determinant is written in a uh, slightly different way. It means the same, so you should not get confused, but uh, very often the same thing would be written like this. So, you write psi 1 s alpha and then write 1 psi 1 s alpha then write uh, uh, sorry. psi 1 s alpha 2 and this one is psi 1 s beta 1, this is psi 1 s beta 2. This is another way of writing the same thing, matter of convention, nothing else. Please do not get confused if you read a textbook that uses uh, this kind of notation instead of this. As you can see, they mean exactly the same. But in one way, the second way of writing is better because here it is very clear psi 1 s alpha, psi 1 s alpha, same uh, spin orbital, you have changed from 1 to 2. Here also psi 1 s beta, psi 1 s beta, you only change from 1 to 2. And go from left to right, 1 is same, psi 1 s alpha has become psi 1 s beta. So, maybe this is actually easier to read, but we are going to follow this convention for now. Right. What is the advantage of writing the wave function all of a sudden in terms of a determinant? First of all, as we are going to say very soon, uh, eventually when you talk about complex systems, atoms or molecules, you have to use computers. Okay. Computational chemistry is a very, very big field nowadays, not nowadays, I mean it has been a very, very big field for several decades now because you cannot do all this calculation by hand. Okay. You want to find energy. Right now we are working within the ambit of orbital approximation as you will see uh, there are ways to uh, actually generate these wave functions without resorting to 1s, 2s also. Then you might want to relate them that is a different issue. How do you do all that? All that is done using computer and computer can work only when you give it the input in a very nice manner or if you let it keep provide the outputs in nice organized manner. That is why matrices determinants these things come very handy because they are essentially uh, data arranged in array forms. right? 
So, that is one thing. Second thing uh, very elegantly something nice comes out. If you go back to the properties of determinants in mathematics those of who us who has studied uh, determinants in mathematics would know that if you exchange two rows or two columns the determinant changes sign. Okay? Not very difficult to understand because determinant means uh, if you write uh, A, B, C, D it is A, D minus B, C. You just interchange it is going to change sign obviously. Let us say I am talking about this determinant A, B, C, D. This is yeah. well forgive me for writing D A I am feeling lazy and do not want to erase D A, D are the same minus B, C. Now, suppose I just interchange the two rows then what happens you write C D in the first row A B in the second row what do you get B C minus since I have written D A there I will write D A. You see what happened if you call this D 1 and you call this D 2 then obviously D 2 is equal to minus D 1. Satisfy yourselves by uh, interchanging two columns that the same thing happens once again. So, exchange of two rows or two columns leads to change in sign of determinant. So, what which means that they are anti symmetric now we are talking remember our total wave function has to be anti symmetric. Okay? So, in any case uh, in whichever form we write it would uh, we have we are working with wave functions, but now uh, by property of determinants you are always going to get anti symmetric functions. So, you cannot make a mistake while writing it by mistake I write plus 1 here the determinant will not be the same right you cannot write the determinant that way. So, that is where we will understand that we have made a mistake right. So, or since the determinants change sign upon exchange of two rows and or two columns when you write the wave function in the determinant form you are assured that you have written an anti symmetric wave function you do not have to worry. Okay? Another property is if any two rows are the same or any two columns are the same then the determinant becomes 0. Once again since we have promised some of students to do things from scratch by and large we will do it. Here I have a matrix I call them D1, D2 so determinant so not matrix sorry determinant I have this bad habit of referring to determinants as matrices please do not get confused. As far as uh, this part is concerned we are only dealing with determinants. So, if I say matrices uh, please correct yourself and understand that I am talking about determinant I uh, do uh, uh, sometimes uh, I am sufficiently careless to use these terms interchangeably, but you do not do it. So, I will call this determinant D3. What are we saying? We want to prove that if to any two rows are the same or any two columns are the same, then the determinant is 0. So, let us write two rows to be the same. What do I get? AB minus AB, obviously, that is equal to 0. So, if two rows are the same or two columns are the same you do the column uh, you, you write a determinant with two identical columns and satisfy yourself that this holds the determinant becomes 0. That leads to something very very interesting and something that we are familiar with something that we have been using axiomatically all the time. Before going there let me remind you where we started from. We started from Pauli principle or this sixth rule of quantum mechanics, sixth postulate of quantum mechanics which said essentially that for fermions like electrons the total wave function has to be anti symmetric. Since it is anti symmetric you can write in determinant form. Now since in a determinant if two rows are the same or two columns are the same the determinant becomes 0 it is essential 
that no two electrons can occupy the same spin orbital. Right? What am I saying here? No two electrons can occupy the same spin orbital. So, what is the meaning of two electrons occupying the same spin orbital? So, uh, it will be psi 1 s alpha 1 and psi 1 s uh, alpha 2 at the same time. Right? Psi 1 s alpha 1, psi 1 s alpha 2 and the other one will be psi 1 s beta 1, psi 1 s beta 2 simultaneously. Okay? So, you try and do that you will get a 0 determinant. Okay? That is what leads to our very familiar poly exclusion principle. Poly exclusion principle what we have might have learnt earlier excludes the possibility that in a particular atom all four, the, the two electrons can have all four quantum numbers are the same if n, l, m are same at least m s has to be different. This is what we studied qualitatively. What we are saying now in a little more quantitative manner is that no two electrons can occupy the same spin orbital. If electron number 1 ha occupies uh, psi 1 s alpha spin orbital then electron number 2 must necessarily occupy psi 1 s beta. Otherwise you get a 0 determinant which means the wave function is 0. If wave function is 0 then probability density and therefore probability of finding the electron anywhere is 0 and then what are we talking about. Yeah. So, very beautifully using this concept of theta determinants we arrive at poly exclusion principle. Okay. So, that is one great thing, but I have made things I have kept things very very simple so far we have only worked with helium. We have only uh, worked with a 2 electron system. What happens if I want to include more electrons? For many electron atoms you can write uh, similar determinantal wave functions which means you can write the uh, wave functions as Slater determinant and here I have shown you one for uh, an n electron atom. Okay. Let us see what the determinant would look like. Look at the first row. In the first row we have kept the label the same as usual and spin orbitals have changed from phi 1 alpha, phi 1 beta, next one will be phi 2 alpha, next one will be phi 2 beta so on and so forth. Okay. Um, we are going to say something, what were they going to say? Um, first of all two things, yes now I remember. First of all why phi 1 alpha first, why not phi 1 beta? The answer is convention. Okay. We have to speak the same language. We do not want to create a tower of Babel where uh, if you do not know what a tower of Babel is just do a Google search. It is a biblical beautiful biblical story that uh, you can learn. A tower of Babel essentially means uh, where uh, one does not understand the other person's language. So, we must formulate things in such a way that we understand each other's language. So, just convention that is the need of convention that is point number 1 that is why we write uh, phi 1 alpha first and not phi 1 beta first. Point number 2 um, why is it that uh, we keep the label constant while going from left to right in a row? We might as well have uh, kept label constant while going from top to bottom in a column, it is a determinant. Determinant will remain unchanged if we just transpose it. Yeah. So, why do not we do it? The answer once again is convention. See Slater wrote it this way and Slater is a famous scientist after whom these determinants have been named. So, until we become uh, more famous than Slater and until uh, the scientific community is agreeable to accept our convention over Slater's, we would better follow Slater's convention. That being said, there are textbooks in which the opposite convention, transpose convention is used. 
actually they are one and the same. But since we do not want to create a tower of Babel for the purpose of this course let us write slater t determinants in this way. Upon going from left to right uh, the electron level remains the same in a row and the uh, spin orbitals change going from lower energy to higher energy and upon going from top to bottom the spin orbital remains the same labels change from 1 to 2 to 3 and so on and so forth up to n all right. What is the last one here this is phi m why not phi n because remember each spin orbital for every any given orbital I can generate two spin orbitals right one with alpha one with beta. So, m has to be less than n. So, is m equal to n by 2? Yes, provided n is even. Understand what I am saying? Each so phi 1 gives you 2 spin orbitals, phi 2 gives you 2 spin orbitals, phi 10 gives you 2 spin orbitals. So, up to phi 10 how many spin orbitals do we have? 20 right and what will m, the value of m be if n equal to 10? 5 well 10 all right. Now, uh, what I am saying is that uh, okay, uh, let, let me say that once again I think I made a mistake. So, let us say I am working with a 10 electron system. So, for 10 electron system what will happen you will have phi 1 alpha 1 so, sorry phi 1 alpha 1 yes and then next one will be phi 1 beta 1. Next we will have phi 2 alpha 1 phi 1 alpha 1 next we will have sorry phi 2 alpha 1 next we will have phi 2 uh, beta 1 then we will have phi 3 alpha 1 next we will have phi 3 beta 1 and so on and so forth. How far will we go? We have already accounted for 6 electrons when we went up to phi 3. So, to account for 10 electrons we have to go up to phi m phi 5. So, in this case m is equal to n by 2. What happens if n equal to 11? Where will I stop? Phi 1 alpha 1, phi 1 beta 1, phi 2 alpha 1, phi 2 beta 1, phi 3 alpha 1, phi 3 beta 1 so on and so forth up to phi 5 alpha 1, phi 5 beta 1. Okay. So, 10 electrons are accounted for 1 is left. Next one will be phi 6 1 alpha 1, phi 6 1 alpha 1. Okay. So, this m is going to be either n by 2 or n by 2 plus 1 depending on whether n is even or odd. Uh, in the preceding couple of minutes I might have said things that might have con confused you a little bit, but I mean you just do it yourself it should not be difficult. Okay. It will not be difficult. So, this is how we write Slater determinants. Let us show you one example for lithium what will happen how many electrons are there 3. So, you write like this 1 s 1 alpha 1, 1 s 1 beta 1, 2 s 1 alpha 1, then 1 s 2 alpha 2 so on and so forth. Finally, the third row is for electron number 3. Is this the complete wave function? This is something that I want you to take as homework. What I am asking is this wave function I have written first of all is it normalizable? Secondly, is it complete or do I need some other term? Okay, I said that as a matter of convention I use alpha, but is beta not equally probable? How do I incorporate that? Is there a need to incorporate that? These are things that I would like you to work out by yourself. But to conclude this part of the discussion, this is what we have learned that uh, you can write it in determinantal form. Any two uh, rows or columns same then the determinant would become 0. Once again I would like you to take this as homework, uh, set one of these two I mean what I am saying is put electron number 3 in 1s orbital. Then what happens? Then this becomes uh, electron number 3 in 1s orbital. So, uh, this 2s will be replaced by 1s everywhere. Then what happens? The first row and the third row they became one and the same. What I am saying is the third electron actually when I see electron number 3 that can be a little confusing for you uh, because you might think that I am talking about the label, I am not talking about the label. 
I am saying the third electron okay, in whichever way we have filled in 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, uh, 2, 1, 3 whatever. What I am saying is uh, let us say that the third electron also goes to 1s. Then uh, this last row is going to become sorry last column is going to become 1s1 alpha 1, 1s2 alpha 2, 1s3 alpha 3. Okay. Now what has happened? This 1s1 alpha 1, 1s2 alpha 2, 1s3 alpha 3 is exactly the same as the uh, first column. So the two columns are same therefore the determinant is 0. So here we have shown that even for lithium uh, poly extrusion principle follows very nicely from uh, this sixth postulate of quantum mechanics. So we have learned state determinant and we have learned how to express the uh, wave function of the ground state of helium and lithium using Slater determinants. In the next module we want to see whether we can extend this discussion to excited states of these atoms.